So yes, yeah, Sarah Wan just destroyed the Kings Indian defense, and I'm going to show you the game right now. In this game, Yasu Sarawan was the white pieces and Avanchuk was the black pieces. Let's get it. So the first move was D4 and Knight F6 going into the King's Indian defense because that's what the title name is. And so after Knight F6, C4, then we got the move for G6, put in a Fian Kettle on this G7 squirt. Man, move out the way. So after the move G6, then we have the move in Knight to C3. And then obviously we have to move Bishop to G7. And after Bishop to G7, we got E4 taking complete control over the center while our opponent is going to be counter attacking into center pretty soon. After E4, we got D6. And this is a well-known structure of the King's Indian defense. And it can go well or it can go really badly. Hikaru Nakamura was actually a really good player who played the Kings Indian defense if you want to see his games, if you want to play the black side. And then Yasu Serwan did bishop to d3. After bishop to d3, e5, this is still open in theory. And then we got the massive change of the position after d5. When d5 is played, we already got the plans now. White should be attacking on the queen side and black should be attacking on the king side just based off the pawn chain. So black pawn chain is heading towards the king side. Just think of it as like a little arrow heading towards our king side. And then the same thing for the white pieces. Getting ready for the pawn break B4, C5 eventually, or maybe a pawn break on F4. We just never know. After D5, A5, our opponent stopping the B4, C5 break. And then we got knight g to e2 after knight g to e2 knight a6 and then f3 was played after f3 knight to d7 maybe getting ready for a quick f5 push then we have to move from bishop to e3 because guess what guess what there's this thing that is called activity in on my stream i like talking about activity a lot because guess what 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 because activity is king exclamation mark all right whoever has more activity in chess which is one of the foundations um of playing good chess whoever has more activity usually wins the game usually you can be bad at activity especially as a beginner you could blunder away all your pieces and then that's that's it but as you get tougher you need all your pieces from the first rank and then the same thing for black, vice versa. You need all your pieces and the attack to get ready for the war that's going to be coming up pretty soon. So after the move of bishop to e3, then black did bishop h6. After bishop h6, you already know the goal is bishop takes on h6, queen to h4, check g3, queen takes back on h6. And then we trade off and, and then black trades off their bad bishop because the pawns is on the same color as this bishop. They trade off their bad bishop for our good bishop, and that would leave us with this horrible piece on the d3 square that is basically a pawn at this present moment until the position opens up with maybe moves like a3, b4, c5, you know, if we get all those extra moves. That's why Yasu Serwan did the move queen d2 in this position, even though the computers is like, yeah, bishop f2 would have been a little bit better, but we're human, so. Queen d2 goes along with the opener principles that we that we know. And after queen d2, bishop takes on e3, which kind of defeats the purpose of everything that I was saying. So that's why bishop f2 would have been pretty much a, a good move. But hey, who cares? It's Yasu Serwan. Queen takes on e3 was played here. After queen takes on e3, we got the move c6, doing palm breaks without even developing most of the pieces that is on the queen side is horrible strategy. And the king is still in the center. The king is still in the center. None of these pieces are developed. Activity is not, that is not a core principle that black believes in right now. Ivanchuk needs to do better. Come on now. So after c6, queen h6, Yasu Serenwan is preventing black from castling from now on because we're covering that f8 square so the king to castle would have to pass by check which that would be a illegal move after the move queen h6 knight d to c5 attacking that bishop on d3 then Yasu Serenwan was like I'm gonna do rook d1 because I really don't care if you take that bishop since that bishop is literally an extra pawn and it's trash 
who cares? I'm gonna sacrifice that bishop for your knight that is usually better in close positions. After rook d1, we got to move queen b6, and this is when it kind of goes, it, it kind of gets watery, right? Because the queen is not watery. What's what's another term? It's it's like a it's kind of getting a little bit dangerous. There's a lot of forcing moves in a position, especially if queen can go to b2 or capture b2. And yes, the Sarah one did bishop back to b1. After bishop to b1, Avonchuk thought that the king would be totally safe on the e7 square, which is a big blunder in this position. Why is it a big blunder? Do you want to pause the video and stop? Or do you want to just keep on the video for the entertainment purposes? Well, as you are looking at that, let me just, I don't know. Let, let me just do the evaluation right quick. Let me just write down the evaluation as you're thinking about the best move. What's the first one? We got material. We got center control. Center control. We got development. Right? Just to finish it off, king safety, pawn structure, and space. All right. So. If we're looking at this, we definitely have a few things. First of all, we have the green light on, we have the green, actually, let me see. What are we equal on? We're equal on material. We definitely know, dang, I need to open all these markers, but we're equal on material. Center control, well, I'm gonna say that we have center control because after this next move that you're gonna see, you're gonna be like, wow, yeah, that was, that was a wrong move. I got I got yellow markers, you know what I mean? Hey, thanks for supporting. Uh, yeah, we have more development since basically our king is, is semi-safer than our opponent's king. And then they got that bishop on c8 and that rook on a8 that's really not doing anything. King safety, our king is definitely safer. Pawn structure, well, the pawn structure is pretty equal right now. So I guess we can just make that an equal sign. And then space, I would say that we have a little bit more space, a little bit more space, especially after this next move you're gonna see, and hopefully you already got the moves out because F4 is just wonderful. After F4, opening up the center, and just a key principle that you need to keep in mind is, let me see, ah, ah. what's the core, what's the principle that you need to keep in mind? If the king is in the center, king in center, king in center, if they decide that they want to stay in the center, you open up center. What do I mean by open up center? King in center, open up center. What do I mean? Well, let me brace this again. I'm doing it aggressively. When I say open up the center, I mean open up. There's three things that you can open up. You're opening up files, diagonals, and ranks. You're opening up these three things by opening up the center. Why do you do this? Because you need to open up as many lines as possible to attack their king to get a quick checkmate. As, we need to get as fast checkmates as possible, especially against tougher opponents. If you're, if Magnus Carlsen decides to leave his king in the center, you need to do this as fast as possible because you already know who Magnus Carlsen is and you already know that he is perfect at defending, especially if you give him the opportunity back. So that's why you need to open up the center as quickly as possible, just like Yasha Sarawan is doing in this game. So after the move, F4, E takes on F4, another big blunder, because you don't want to open up the position. Now we got the move Rook to F1, just utilizing all the pieces and all the files that was opened up here. So after Rook to F1, Rook F8, don't know what that Rook is doing right now. Now we got the move Queen to F4. Queen takes on F4, which after looking at this game, you already know that it is completely lost for the opponent. It's completely lost. Don't even think that black is winning. The computer is saying that it's plus 5.5 points. That's terrible 
for black. That's terrible for Avancha. So after queen takes on f5, f6 was trying to save the position just a little bit. But then you got the move d takes on c6, opening up another file to attack the king. So after d takes on c6, queen takes on c6, then Yasuserawan yeah, so does knight to d4 because after, so you open up the file and then you put that knight on a perfectly good square where it's utilizing that strong point, that, that strong weak square to attack the queen that gives white a tempo in the position. And you know how much that we love tempos when we're playing chess. So the queen went back to e8 and what do you think next? Well, if you was thinking to move like e5, you are totally wrong. I'm just going to point that out there right now. You're, you're not doing the principle. It's not just giving away material. All right. We don't just give away material, but we have to do smart moves. And the smartest move in this position is doing knight to d5. Checking the king. King moved back to d8. Pretty much the only good move in this position, which you are going to run into queen takes on d6, which is pretty ugly but what else was going to happen after queen to d6 bishop d7 this position is hopeless i wouldn't even be playing this right now especially after seeing yasu serawan play the move knight to b5 and after knight to b5 avanchuk resign what is he supposed to do and it's really silly how the big difference between this king on d8 is that this king on e1 there's no pieces surrounding that king and the king is perfectly fine but that bishop on b1 is defending perfectly because queen takes on e4 might have been a big change you know what i mean so hey knight b5 it, it made him call it off call off the troops and call off the game and just to continue just a little bit more so that you can see the idea of what was going to happen, we have the, the best move, f5, the best defense, of course. But then Black was going to have to deal with a queen b6 next, king c8, and then the fascinating move, knight d6, forking the king and the queen in this position. And that's why this was completely lost. There's too many weaknesses. There's too many checks. And this king is still defenseless even after it goes to king b8. So, yeah. In case you was worrying, ah, uh, he could have played longer. No, especially not against a grandmaster. Lose your queen in this fashion after, I mean, it was probably sitting at the board for hours now and to get a position like this. This is ugly. And this is why Yasu Serawan, I will say, is one of the best teachers, the one of the best chess coaches in the world right now.